I really enjoyed uh, this symposium. Thank you very much for organizing this. Uh, for at least two reasons. One is that I heard, uh, you know, very d d diverse opinions from the different people from different countries, from with a different background, with a different perspectives. For example, I was struck by a, a you know one uh, gentleman saying that uh, Japan's defense efforts might be creating uh, arms race or security dilemma in Asia. So, you know, from our perspective, we are, Japan is, has been trying to uh, increase or strengthen our defense capabilities in the face of, the, you know, um, rising China, which is, uh, has been spending so much on defense and uh, becoming more assertive in the region in terms of uh, expanding its uh, um, sphere of influence in the South China Sea and the East China Sea. But so it was really different uh, perspective. I didn't even think about it. So it's a, you know, really a learning process. So um, I learned how we have to uh, be able to understand uh, different opinions with uh, different perspectives. Uh, two, um, definitely it's e uh, necessary for us, the Japanese, uh, Koreans and Chinese, um, to, to work with Europeans. Uh, policy makers, specialist people uh, on different issues in Asia. For example, we talk about China. China is uh, one of the biggest uh, trading partners for many European countries. Uh, China, North Korea has a trade relationship with uh, some of the countries in Europe. And, uh, you know, in terms of uh, territorial issues uh, that we have with uh, uh, South Korea and uh, uh, China, well, this is an international issue, and uh, it's an international legal, international law legal issues, um, which should be resolved through international legal frameworks, such as International um, Court of Justice. So we have we are you know always encouraging China and South Korea to agree to bring the matter to the International Court of Justice, for example. But without international pressure or consensus, that it's a good idea for us to resolve this issue through international frameworks, legal frameworks. It would be very hard for us, you know, Japan alone, to persuade, and encourage South Korea and China uh, to do so. So. We need your um, European support, and it was a great opportunity uh, for us to make the case. We always talk about North Korea's nuclear weapons and missiles, but you know, technically, North uh, Geneva is within a North Korean missile range. But nobody in this region uh, feels threatened by North Korea, so that's a different uh, perspective. China is the same thing. You know, we are really are concerned about uh, negative consequences. Well, I mean, there are positive consequences, but mainly we are more concerned about negative consequences of the uh, rise of China. But Europeans are, you know, kind of benefiting more from the right, uh, rise of China, and uh, they are not much concerned about uh, China's military expansion, right? So. I, you know, there are very different perspectives that we have, but um, as a members of the same international community, we have to coordinate our policies and we have to understand, uh, you know, kind of concerns that each other have. And uh, we, you know, as p people, countries in, the re in Asia are concerned about the uh, rise of negative consequences of the rise of China, people in Europe are concerned about what Russia might be up to. So we have shared, you know, concerns and different concerns, but we can work together in order to address international uh, issues that we face today. The United States uh, has been becoming a little more isolationist. You know, it's America first is the kind of slogan that uh, Mr. Trump has been advocating. Uh, so this is the time that uh, you know Europe and Asia work together 
um, and ride out this, uh, you know, it's not necessarily a crisis, but a difficult time uh, by working very closely together. That's why we are trying to prevent it from happening uh, by taking different me measures. Uh, there are three pillars uh, in the Japanese security strategy. One is to uh, strengthen uh, Japan's own defense capabilities. Two is to strengthen U.S.-Japan alliance. Three is to uh, expand uh, security partnership uh, throughout this region by, uh, you know, working more closely with uh, countries such as South Korea, Australia. Uh, Southeast Asian countries and India. So by doing so, we will try to maintain balance of power in the region. And actually, uh, some people think that uh, this is uh, like a containment of China. I don't think so. This is actually uh, conducive and in the interest of China too, because uh, you know they are crazy people in China. To, I mean, in any country, including China, there are hardliners as well as moderate uh, leaders and thinkers. So what we have to do is to make it impossible for China to use force and uh, you know expand its sphere of influence by you know illegal, illegitimate means. You know, and uh, if we can maintain peace, yeah, balance of power in this region, that would be we would be in a better position to be able to discourage those hardliners in the Chinese leadership from taking aggressive measures and encourage more moderate ones to have an upper hand. So I think uh, our effort to maintain balance of power in this region is actually in the interest of not only the US, Japan, South Korea and other countries in the region, but also China. Well, we are uh, talking about defense. We are not talking about going to war with somebody. We are trying to de deter uh, wars and conflicts and thing, other things. Um, so, well, certainly we have to make our defense policy a little more flexible. But uh, even with the current, uh, you know, constitution, there are lots that we can do. And I think, uh, well, it. It's, Mr. Abe is talking about revising the constitution, but he's not talking about revising the constitution in order to dramatically change uh, Japan's defense policy or defense posture. You know, if, if we even if we try to you know dramatically increase the military capabilities, Japan has a huge amount of cumulative government debt. We cannot afford much. You know to. Uh, uh, spend much more on defense, right? So there is a limit to what we can Even do. So in developing towards collective security approach. Yeah, so you know, now we can exercise the right of collective self-defense. The uh, uh, you know what's good about it is it, that uh, we cannot increase the uh, defense capabilities uh, significantly. So the uh, you know with the new right of collective self-defense. What we can do is to actually use the limited amount of resources that, uh, that we have at hand right now more flexibly, more creatively. So that's the point and that's what exactly what we are trying to do. Actually, I'm not too concerned about the uh, security of Japan uh, in the face of North Korean threat. I'm actually more concerned about the security of South Korea because ultimately, uh, North Korea's arch enemy is South Korea. The two Koreas have been competing with each other as a limited, you know, leadership position as a Korean of the Korean nation in the past almost 60, 70 years. And uh, so North Korea is still trying to compete with uh, South Korea and uh, nuclear weapons and um, missiles are, are tools to be able to uh, take an upper hand vis-a-vis -vis South Korea because I mean in all other areas you know be it economic performance, social development or political uh, you know um, democratization, South Korea, North Korea has been lagging behind South Korea right 
So nuclear weapons missiles capabilities are the only uh, compet you know, uh, comparative advantage that North Korea has over South Korea. So, um, and the U.S.-Japan alliance, we talk, say that U.S.-Japan alliance is there to defend Japan, but it's true. But actually, the U.S.-Japan alliance is also there for the defense of South Korea. So what I'm most concerned about uh, is that North Korea with uh, nuclear missile capabilities might be able to drive a wedge between South Korea on the one hand and the United States and Japan on the other hand, because the U.S. and Japan, if North Korea attacked some South Korea, we would definitely try to assist South Korea by, you know, in, uh, from a Japanese perspective, providing the U.S. bases bases in Japan for the U.S. forces fighting for South Korea, and also Japanese self defense force would be helping assisting U.S. forces which are fighting for the defense of South Korea. And North Korea's uh, nuclear missile capabilities might make it difficult. So we have to work, we being uh, South Korea, the U.S. and Japan, we have to coordinate our policies and keep working very closely together.